So as we look forward to OpenStack becoming more mainstream, one of the things that we find is that you've, we've solved a lot of the problems of layer two, layer three, we've gotten into started dabbling a bit into even layer four, but as we get into layer seven and all the way up the stack and we provide an end-to-end -end solution with OpenStack, what we're finding is that we have to look at things from the opposite approach, which is I want to go and deploy mainstream applications. To deploy mainstream application means you have to support something like HTTP. And nowadays with HTTP, that means HTTPS. And right now with OpenStack, it's very limited in its ability to support SSL. And so that's something that's very, very vital, very critical to the success of OpenStack is to be able to have this end-to-end -end story that includes SSL. So a couple of things that I think are very important for people to think about and realize as they're looking ahead to how do I make OpenStack successful is they need to be concerned and cognizant about um, their clicker not working. Left, right? Hey, look at that, the buttons work. Um, <coughs> with SSL, there's a lot of an enhancements and advances in SSL technology. So if you're using SSL today, first off, you shouldn't be. You should be using TLS. It's a little bit um, um, of, of uh, getting nitpicky, but uh, the SSL v2, v3, et cetera, these are long gone. They need to be uh, deprecated, and we should be using TLS. Then we use the term SSL interchangeably to mean TLS, but the reality is, People need to be thinking about that and thinking about what is the next generation. If using, you know, you've migrated the RSA 2K certificates, you shouldn't be. You should be looking at elliptic curve cryptography. It's decades newer technology. It's, it's much more efficient to process. It's much more efficient for the end users, and it's significantly more secure. So there's a lot of enhancements that have happened in SSL technology that people really haven't been cognizant of and haven't paid attention. Just said, well, I've got SSL. My site's secure. That is not always the case. Um, and you look and say, well, I've got uh, my sites on the internet, it's working, good enough. So a lot of these advances and enhancements are available to customers and to folks that are using uh, new technologies, but then they kind of have this big hole and this big gap. So some of the things that are worth looking into and exploring, SNI, HSTS, uh, and, you know, you can read through the, uh, some of the acronyms of here, but the moral of the story is that SSL technology has evolved and the perception and the understanding and the education has not evolved. So I'm not going to go through each and every one of these. This is something that, uh, but I do encourage people to look into on their own time. But this is definitely the sort of thing that Avi is working towards, is being able to both educate as well as be able to provide a complete and cohesive solution to where's the world going and how do you get there? Um, is that something that you can make happen with existing infrastructure? Is that something that you need to think outside the box and figure out how do I know if my site is um, as enabled by it with perfect forward secrecy. What do we have to do to get to that, to make that happen? <clears throat> so one of the things that's very important as we look ahead towards uh, something like OpenStack, where we're providing all of these uh, uh, application delivery, we're providing the applications themselves, and this has all been done within software. So what Avi provides is we provide a software-based application delivery controller, a load balancer. As part of being a load balancer, we're also providing SSL termination, which is pretty much a mainstream capability. And one of the immediate questions is, well, how do you do that in software and still be able to uh, keep up with the, a big hardware appliance? Well, the hardware appliances sit outside of OpenStack, so you're tromboning traffic into and out of OpenStack for every little packet. We sit inside of OpenStack, inside of the virtualized environment. That does mean that we're doing SSL in software. That's one of the first reasons why we recommend getting off of RSA certificates and getting onto elliptic curve. They're significantly faster. They're about four times faster to process. So on a typical server, you can handle about 32,000 SSL transactions per second, new SSL users per second, which is a tremendous number. We're also going to see that the number of concurrent SSL users is going to drop significantly as HTTP2 now becomes available. It's now been available for about a couple of months, and we're already seeing a significant reduction in the way that concurrent connections are handled, because instead of having six connections from a single user, you've got one connection from a user. So the SSL session concurrency is dropping. So there's different uh, advances that are all playing into how SSL is going to uh, play out over the next couple of years. And that's something that's very, very important. Another piece, too, is that um, while you're following Intel curve and Intel's getting faster all the time at being able to do SSL termination, there's still limitations to this is as much as this server can process. This is the amount maximum of SSL I can do. One of the things that Avi has the ability to do is, um, I can't do a live demo, but um, we have the ability to simply scale out across multiple um, CPUs. If that's going to be on multiple servers, we can simply distribute that workload, and therefore we can pick up multiple CPUs dynamically on the fly to say, 
this application needed 10,000 SSL TPS. Now, now it needs 100,000. Now it needs 200,000. And just simply go and grow that infrastructure dynamically and then shrink it when we don't need it. So be able to uh, dynamically provision CPU or CPU cores as necessary. And that's very important to say, how much SSL TPS do I need now? And how much do I need three years from now? Eh, just deploy the thing and it'll just figure it out. And if it needs more, it grows. That's the whole purpose of SDN. That's the magic of what we're all trying to achieve. And that's something that's been very sorely lacking from the industry. Um, beyond just the, uh, the performances, how do I implement this? Uh, implementation is certainly very important. Uh, if we're talking about within the LBAS uh, V1 infrastructure, it's very, very limited. Unfortunately, it's a bit too limited. And that is a big reason why we don't see enough production applications running within OpenStack yet. Certainly, uh, at the V2 of LBAS will tremendously help that by adding a lot of ex additional extensions and such. What Avi has done is Avi has added the ability to add the certificate section uh, to the, to the uh, Horizon UI. So with this, you can, within the Horizon UI, you can go into the certificates, you can go and upload your certificate, add that or append that to an existing application, and voila, you're now being able to do SSL termination without having to manually log into uh, the application delivery infrastructure and then manually upload this. You can do all of this right there natively within the Horizon. So it's something that uh, helps tremendously is to just to have this capability. Um, you can, of course, use REST APIs, et cetera, to log into Avi to make these changes, but that's something that is not a requirement. Uh, and one of the last things that I think is pretty important is you start looking at things like just SSL configuration. If you look at the open SSL, this is my preferred cipher, and I, made a, I got one thing wrong there. You know, how does anybody look at that? How does, how does anybody make human sense of that? Uh, the human brain is not built that way, and yet that's how security is done today. Um, one of the things we've done is if you're using our UI, you can pop into our UI and simply just go and be able to take a look at the ciphers, take a look at the versions that you've enabled, enable a version of SSLs that you support, and then based upon that, here's the ciphers that I'm going to allow, and I can set the prioritization of them. You can, based upon that, we're providing an SSL rating. So in other words, real time, we're telling you that based upon what you've, uh, what you've selected, enabled, and the ordering you set that in, we're going to tell you that here's your performance, Here's your relative security, and here's the compatibility. So if you want to make this as secure as possible, go for it. No one's going to be able to connect because they don't have a secure enough browser, but you're very secure. So having that kind of information and that, that feedback is very vital and very important. And that's something that has been missing sorely. And so that's why people don't do things like they don't uh, protect themselves from Poodle attack. Because to do that, you have to disable SSL v3. But if I do that, what users am I dropping? No one really, no one has that information. So that's one of the things that Avi provides is that ability to give you that feedback so I can actually drill down into every user that connected with SSL v3, what browsers were they using, did those browsers support a different version, have that kind of knowledge and that understanding of what's going on. And I can tell you who came in from what geographies, from what versions, are they coming in from a cell phone, from an iPad, from a desktop PC. So all of that information is, is what's very important to be able to make a, an intelligent decision on my security <coughs> policies. So just as a recommendation, we highly encourage you to take a look at you know, what's available out there. What is the technology that's, that's uh, already existing today? If that's going to be things like enabling HSTS, if that's going to be uh, automatically setting up our redirects from HTTP to HTTPS, there's absolutely no excuse and no reason not to. As you move forward to things like HTTP2, the browsers will not negotiate HTTP2 if you don't have SSL enabled. So you've got to be thinking about this. And OpenStack as well, if you're going to deploy applications in it, this is something that's just going to be a mandatory requirement to be able to support this next generation architectures and to make SDN a reality. So thank you very much and try this out yourself. Download this off of avinetworks.com. <laughs>